So as I'm currently considering what TVs to upgrade to in my game room, I thought I'd kind of go over a few options I'm considering, um, primary uses of the TV, things like that, and uh, kind of see which one might make the most sense. Um, so let's, let's start with this one because this would literally be not the direct um, successor to the TV I have, but um, in a way it kind of is. So the TV that I have in the game room now <clears throat> is a 75 inch Sony X950G, uh, 2019 4K LED, uh, Sony's flagship that year for 4K LED. It's been a great TV, uh, but it's just, it's, it's missing one big feature that uh, yes, I can live without it, but I'm getting to the point where I don't want to. <laughs> so um, this is the X95K. Uh, it's not the direct successor, mainly because this is a different TV technology. This is a mini LED, whereas mine is a full array local dim dimming TV. I think that TV probably has either 72 zones or 60 zones it's Sony's for years has had really low zone counts on their uh, fall TVs and uh, I believe this one has hundreds of zones and the 75 inch maybe somebody will correct me but I think it's like 360 or 384 something like that so it's a big step up in dimming zones it's a different technology um, so this would be one option to consider. Uh, another option would be this one, <clears throat> the 77 inch uh, C2. A um, little bit of background: I've never owned an LG TV. Um, I've had I've had Sony TVs now for, gosh, maybe like 10 years or so. Um, so I, I don't have a lot of background and uh, knowing much about LG, but. <clears throat> when it comes to gaming, this seems to be the TV that most people uh, recommend uh, because it has four HDMI 2.1 ports. Um, while that's not the be-all, end-all for me, uh, I mainly just game on a PS5 and, and very occasionally an Xbox Series X. Uh, so it would be kind of nice to be able to have those two both have HDMI 2.1 capabilities. Um, but I'm not ruling out the Sony because on the Sony, uh, I could just, I already have a 8K splitter, so I could just have, uh, the one HDMI 4 port that does, uh, 2.1 that would be free. I could just have both consoles running into that splitter and then just alternate. And again, I, I use PS5 99% of the time, so I probably wouldn't even be switching back and forth, but in the event that I did, uh, I could just switch it over. HDMI, I can't use the HDMI 3 port because I'll have the um, the receiver for eARC on that one. So, uh, but this LG, um, it'll bring a couple of things to the table that the Sonys don't. Uh, one being those four HDMI 2.1 ports, so I wouldn't have to use the splitter. Uh, two, it's an OLED. So my concern for years about OLED, and I literally finally decided to give an OLED a shot um, earlier this year. <clears throat> and uh, so now I'm considering OLED for the gaming TV. My one concern there, which is one that probably gets talked about a lot, is the dimming. Um, for example, like if I'm playing Madden and it has that static um, scoreboard logo all the time on there, the Sony OLEDs are notorious for uh, dimming heavily over time. Now, the, for me, the annoying part about that is the screen, you know, while it's dimming slowly, you may not notice that. I A lot of times I don't. Where I really notice it is when it like goes to the halftime screen or something like that. And then when it comes back out of halftime or the screen changes, 
uh, the screen will brighten back up. So you're literally going from like kind of a darkened screen that you know it's like, hey, if the if the TV would just stay uh, slightly dimmed throughout the rest of the gameplay, it's you know I could probably live with that sort of thing. But it's the fact that it'll be dimmed down and then you it'll flip to a different screen and when you come back to the gameplay it'll be bright again so you, you're just seeing it go back and forth as you're playing the game um, this LG OLEDs I know that they have um, different features you can toggle on and off to help with that uh, there's also out there that you can um, go into the service menu and uh, you know make make more um, make deeper adjustments to that dimming thing not that you know any of us would ever do anything like that but that is kind of nice to know that it's like okay on the Sony you, you have no control over the dimming whereas on LG you, you do have some options to kind of get around that you know at your own risk um, I pull this one up because I think today I noticed this one actually has gone on sale uh, $29.96 so now it and the Sony are identically, you know, pretty much the same price. But the one that really is intriguing to me is this one, the 77 inch G2. Um, over the weekend, I actually stopped in a local Best Buy and was fortunate enough that they actually had um, some of the remotes out where you could just kind of pick it up, play with the settings and stuff. And I was able to spend, you know, 10-15 minutes just changing different settings and just kind of navigating around the G2. They had a 77 G2 on display and I was really impressed with that. Um, like I mentioned before, I've had Sony's for years. I've gotten used to the, the Sony picture quality and the processing, but the G2 was a beautiful TV. And that's just playing their demo material and you know changing settings on that. Obviously I didn't have a console or anything to hook up, but Really intrigued by this because you're getting a heat seat, heat sink, if I can talk, um, with that, which you would think would help more with image retention. Um, you know, that temporary image retention, which is so bad on the Sony's. Um, so yeah, these are kind of three that I'm considering. I would say if I had to rank them, I would have the G2 one, um, the C2 number two, and the X95K number three, if if I had to say what my ranking is, but um, you know, I'm curious to know what what are your thoughts? Do, does any of you have this TV? Um, and if you do, which one do you have? And talk to me about your experiences with gaming and content watching with yours. Um, tell me about your settings. What what are what are some best setting recommendations uh, depending on which one? You know, is the G2 worth, look at that, it, I mean, what is that, like $700, $800, is the G2 worth $800 more than the C2? I don't know if it is, but again, I don't have a lot of experience with the LG TVs, especially the OLEDs, so drop a comment below, let me know if you think that uh, the G2 is worth it, or the C2 would be the better way to go for bang for buck, or just stick with the Sony. It's what you know. You know you're getting a good picture quality. You don't have to worry about dimming. You know, let me know what you think. Drop the comment below if you like the video. Uh, consider giving it a like. Consider subscribing. Turning on the bell notification as I'm going to have more uploads here in the future. Talk to you later.